Hello and welcome to the video on Perceptual Map. And in this video, I will show you step by step in how to draw or design a perceptual map. This is part of marketing strategy. First of all, a little recap on the perceptual maps. It is a tool or one of the tools that is commonly used by marketers and brand managers in practice for positioning a brand. And a brand can be anything. It can be product, it can be service, it can be company. You can also position a person if you wanted to. So a word brand has a fairly wide meaning here. The perceptual map will show the position of the brand in the marketplace. So now let me explain it further. The result is a visual representation of consumer perceptions of the brand in relation to its competitors using attributes or dimensions that are important for customers. So that's what you get, visual representations of customer perceptions. And not just any customers, but here we're talking about the target market. And it's always in relation to competitors, because anytime you hear a word positioning, you have to remember that it's always in relation to competitors. And we're picking up attributes or dimensions that are important to customers. Just a note on terminology, those dimensions or attributes can also be referred to as features or benefits. And uh, um, drawing perceptual map will allow companies to spot opportunities in the market. For example, you can find perhaps unidentified opportunities or simply to understand strengths and weaknesses of brands as perceived by customers. So you can see how consumers perceive your particular brand in relation to others. With every tool we use, there are some limitations. Well, uh, to start with, perceptual map is a two-dimensional uh, map, meaning it may be just to kind of consider two dimensions or two attributes in thinking of consumer choices uh, when they select brands may be too limited in considering a broader range, or a range of relevant dimensions. Um, for example, if we're buying a computer, we might be thinking about the, <clears throat> the speed of the computer, the memory size, uh, the design of the computer, uh, warranties and all of that. So here are already more than two dimensions. So when we draw perceptual maps using just two dimensions, we may be missing out on other important attributes. Um, however, there are some other tools we can use, radar charts or also they are called spidergrams. But uh, about this, we will talk in another video. Another limitation is that it does not show the importance of each attribute. Um, so you might have selected two attributes, for example, the speed of a computer in this case, or and also say a brand name, but maybe one of them is a lot more important, for example, a brand name rather than the speed of a computer. And finally, if you don't get the attributes right, which is the most, uh, the trickiest part perhaps of perceptual map, it's the hardest part actually, then the interpretation would suffer or you may simply design ineffective strategies based on the <laughs> kind of like wrong assumptions you made in the first place. Um, so when this might happen, when not enough care was taken to find out about the attributes, perhaps we rushed this, maybe we didn't engage with a proper research, secondary data, primary data, and so forth, or we simply tend to rely more on our own knowledge and understanding ours as managers and how life works and what is important to customers, which may be completely different to other people. And this is what happens often in practice. We as managers are a little bit shocked because we discover that actually people think and behave differently to the way we think. Uh, so it's very important to put yourself in the shoes of the customers. So there are a few limitations. So here are the steps you need to undertake in order to draw or design a perceptual map. Well, the very first thing, the most important thing, which probably shouldn't even be as a step, but is fundamental, thing to do before starting drawing any perceptual map is to define the target market first. You can't just draw a perceptual map for all consumers. Uh, you will be confused, you will identify uh, too many dimensions, wrong dimensions, or it will simply not be tailored as well to your target market. So you really need to um, filter out who you want to go after. And the more uh, 
um, descriptive you are in terms of a target market, the better. Number two is identify attributes or dimensions that are important to your target market when choosing between brands. If you buy a computer, what is important? What are they looking for? If you buy chocolate, what are they looking for? If you buy shampoo, what are they looking for? Um, number three, identify competitors, direct and indirect competitors. So once you have identified the attributes that are important for customers, you will see that identifying competitors becomes a lot easier task. Here you have to remember that uh, whilst it's often easy to think of the direct competitors, you have to think of the indirect competitors where people um, also consider making the choices from. Um, number four, uh, score each brand on the attributes to see how well each brand is performing on the attributes that are important for customers. Once again, attributes, we call them dimensions or features or benefits. These are basically purchasing criteria, if you like, in other words, that are important for people when we make choices. Then we plot brands, usually using average scores on the perceptual map, and we try and interpret the perceptual map in order to find opportunities or strategic moves we can take, or simply to understand what are the strengths and the weaknesses of our particular brand in relation to competitors. I put step number seven a little bit more advanced because that's not something that we do very common very often but it's very useful thing to do it would be to place your consumers or your target market uh, their ideal position on the map and then you can see how close you or the other brands are to the location where your target market wants to be right so let's now put this all into practice and let's draw a perceptual map using our step-by-step -step guide so the first thing was to identify the target market. So suppose for the illustration of this example, our target market would be families with young children who prioritize natural lifestyle. Uh, by natural lifestyle, we mean they try to eat more natural foods, use natural, uh, more natural medicine, um, get a lot of fresh air, exercise, and even when we buy hygiene or home products, they try to look for like natural, better ingredients, maybe better for the health, better for the environment and so forth. And as such, they are seeking organic food. So they have both parents working, have average to high disposable, uh, disposable income, and they live in central London. Okay, so that would be an example for grocery shoppers. This, this is your target market. Here is a reminder of step-by-step -step guide. So I'm just going to put that on the screen so you can have it in mind when we draw it. So we've done step number one, identified the target market. Uh, now, step number two would be identify attributes or dimensions that are important to your customers. So think about what would be important for that target market. Okay. Um, is it price? Is it location of a supermarket? Is it the fact that they can do online orders? Is it the fact that they have loyalty cards? Would that be a brand? Uh, would that be store atmosphere? Would that be parking? Uh, would that be the choice of organic foods they have? And so forth. So there can be many different things, okay? And that's where you would have to undertake, undertake a bit of research. Not always you have to do primary research where you use focus groups, interviews and all of that, but maybe, you know, that may require a lot of time and a lot of um, cost may involve. But uh, very often you can find secondary data research where a mental report and all other reports where you can find about consumer choices. So um, there are multiple ways to extract that data. But say you have identified that price is important consideration, like uh, for most people, for most of the purchases perhaps, and um, also another consideration since they prioritize natural lifestyle would be the choice of organic foods. They would like to shop at places where they have a wider choice of organic foods. Um, so this is an example. Yes, you can think of other dimensions, but for the illustration of example, perhaps they would suit here quite nicely. Now, um, the third step would be to identify competitors. So now, based on the price and choice of organic foods, who can we think of competitors? Perhaps we would identify a few different companies such as Waitrose, um, M&S as having wide choice of organic foods and being relatively high in price in comparison with other supermarkets. For example, Waitrose, they have developed their own Dutchy organic brand and pretty much any food uh, category you look at, they would have it organic, be it 
olive oil, uh, dates, uh, chocolate, rice, potatoes, and so forth. M&S also is not very behind them. However, M&S stores or Marks and Spencer would be perhaps smaller and the choice would not be as wide as waiters. There is another competitor who we would refer to more as indirect competitor would be Abel and Cole in the UK. So uh, this is an organic food kind of store. Um, the, the, the logo also says buzzing um, about organic for 30 years. Okay, so they have a pretty good uh, selection of organic foods. They deliver those fruits and veg boxes on a weekly basis and so forth. So that you might think of as more indirect competitor, not a typical grocery shop. However, that's where people can buy the food. And in terms of the prices, they would probably be a bit similar to waiters or MS, or even slightly, slightly, in some cases, a little bit more higher than those shops. And there might be some reasons. Maybe um, it just they don't have these economies of scales as waiters or MS, so it might simply cost them more. Now, the other category you will find Sainsbury's and Tesco's, where they have a fairly wide choice of organic foods, really a high choice, but the prices would be lower than waitress or MS. Remember, the exact position on the map doesn't matter. What matters here is the relative position. So we're trying to do our best here. And uh, then you have supermarkets like Corp and Asda, will be a little bit lower perhaps in price and less choice. And then you have Little and Aldi in the last few years in particular, they um, started selling more organic foods, but the choice would be a lot more narrow than other shops we considered on the map. Um, you can also think of other indirect competitors such as farmers markets. They would be highly, um, the price would be quite high. And again, we don't have economies of scales. Um, um, so there might be a, a bit more organization in getting into the farmer's market, paying for stalls and so forth. And the choice may not be as large, okay? Because it's farmer's markets, they will be select cheese, meat and other fruits and veg, and you may not have as wide of a choice. So you can see we've identified lots of direct competitors, but also we see indirect competitors. And number four step was to score each brand on the attributes. So here, we didn't really do that very precise, accurate mathematical scoring, but we just did it more based on kind of our intuition. But you can score each brand, say you've identified out of five or out of 10, and you can see how well a particular brand is delivering, for example the more wide choice they have, the more on the edge kind of that supermarket would be. Um, so you can think of scoring the brand, but in this uh, case, I'm not going to do that, uh, but I'm sure you understand how to do it. And uh, five plot brands using average scores on the perception map, which we plotted, and now we can interpret the map. So you can see that um, it's quite crowded. So there are lots of players in the market. Um, and you can see if you're going actually after the families who prioritize natural lifestyle and they want wide choice of organic foods, well, waitress uh, perhaps can emphasize their, in their positioning materials um, that they have perhaps the wider selection of organic foods on, and maybe at uh, fair prices. For example, the, uh, it's their philosophy to say that we use honest pricing. So if price is important for customers, they can like make more of it in their advertising materials. Okay. But Abel and Cole can advertise as well in terms of like how much organic foods they have. And if the price is a bit higher, they can, you know, kind of keep, be a little bit more quiet about the price, but emphasize the, the white choice. Other supermarkets have opportunities to enter more, perhaps little Aldi can have more of the organic food selection. If that's the market they would like to pursue. So this was an illustration. Oh, oh, sorry. And I forgot one thing. Number seven, place uh, consumers or target market and deal position on the map. So suppose your target market wants to be somewhere here. You know, who doesn't want a good price, but we want the widest choice of organic foods possible. So the closer you are to the competitors, the better it is. And here are a few more words about interpretation of perceptual maps. So the, um, here is a list of some useful questions you may ask yourself. Uh, for example, what area do we claim and what areas do the other competitors claim? Which areas would be the most valuable to our target market, which would be least valuable? What brands are in the most valuable area 
um, what are the strengths, how vulnerable perhaps they are, how crowd, crowded is this space, which areas are not claimed, how valuable are they, what would it take to position ourselves there, what attributes are most least influential, influential and so forth. So this might help you guide the process um, in terms of interpretation of the radar, uh, sorry, of the perceptual maps. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, please um, hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel so you always get the content I release. Thank you very much for watching.